Coming up on DITV, we'll tell you about a statewide investigation that's reaching Iowa City. And later, we'll give you the rundown on how some Hawkeyes are invisible no more. We have highlights from the wrestling meet against the Michigan Wolverines. And results from Iowa basketball's road trip to Lincoln this weekend. Find out what the weather is going to be like for the upcoming Super Bowl in weather. All that and more coming up on this Monday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to DITV. I'm Bo Bowman. And I'm Becca Scadden. The Iowa Nebraska NAACP is investigating white supremacist materials found across the state of Iowa, with the latest incidents being in Iowa City of special interest. One of the incidents in question concerns a flyer distributed in an Iowa City neighborhood showing a blonde white woman under the heading Love Your Race. It included the logo and the web address of a national of the National Alliance, a white nationalist group. The other occurred during this month's Women's March, where a now-identified man helped, held up cards stating it's okay to be white. Stick with DITV as the story develops. For the first time since 1976, Iowa City will be an overnight stop on Ragbri. This Iowa tradition sees around 8,500 bicyclists ride west to east across the state during the last week in July. More importantly for Iowa City, though, is the potential tourism and visitor income. Coralville has been a stop on Ragbri for multiple years and reports revenue exceeding a million dollars. For more in-depth look at Ragbri, its history, and why exactly Iowa City was chosen, check out the front page of the Daily Iowan where Caitlin Weisbrod has more. An Iowa Senate Budget Committee approved a plan Thursday to cut around $50 million from the state budget, with almost half of the funds coming from higher education. This means that the University of Iowa, along with UNI and Iowa State, would lose nearly $20 million of funding, while community colleges would lose around $5 million. Stick with DITV as we tell you exactly how this could affect student life. Pieces of African American culture are taking over the main library to kick off Black History Month. An exhibit called Invisible Hawkeyes, African American Pathfinders and Tastemakers opens February 2nd. It features the writings, musical pieces, theses, and more of segregated university students from the years 1930 to 1970. The Invisible Hawkeyes exhibit is inspired by a book of the same name written by University of Iowa professors Lena and Michael Hill. They hope it will motivate current, U current UI students to go above and beyond in their work. Actor Woody Harrelson made a stop in Iowa City this past weekend. Students attended a screening of his new film, Lost in London, on Thursday. Harrelson then gave a Q&A with students where he answered questions about his new film. On Friday, the Daily Iowan sat down with Harrelson for an exclusive interview on KRUI, where we got to hear more about his keys to success. So that's why when I hear people say, oh man, I had no idea, just I was... I didn't want to become an actor. I just happened to that. I'm like, no way, no way. It never happens that way. You know, people really do. You got to be focused and driven, and and uh, and okay to 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 not let rejection cripple you. To see the full interview, head on over to the Daily Iowans YouTube page. Well, Becca, it was kind of warm this week weekend, but uh, on my way into the studio, it was kind of chilly. Yeah, it's getting a little bit colder, and I'm definitely not really liking it. But what I am interested in is what is the weather going to be like for the Super Bowl coming up this weekend? Yeah, that should be interesting. Let's toss it over to Joe in the weather studio to find out more. Yeah, thanks, guys, for all you guys traveling this weekend for the Super Bowl, either by plane, train, or automobile. Should expect delays due to weather. There will be several winter storms between the Midwest and the East Coast between today and Sunday. So prepare yourselves for some Arctic conditions and some very cold weather for the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. It's a good thing that the stadium is a dome because during the game we're looking at some temperatures falling to about 3 degrees with a chance of snow. This weekend in Iowa City we're also looking at some snow passing our way as well. This week we're looking at about 30 degrees for today with the upcoming weather. Today we're going to have partly cloudy skies with the highs reaching about 30 degrees. 
Tonight we are going to see some temperatures drop all the way down to about 14 degrees with some light wind. As we make our, now let's take a look at our extended forecast. Tuesday will be partly cloudy with day with temperatures reaching a high of about 37 degrees. Wednesday is going to be the warmest day of the week, but we'll still have a lot of clouds out there with temperatures reaching about 46 degrees. Thursday, the temperature is going to drop quite a bit all the way down to around 23 degrees. The temperature as we continue to stay will continue to be in the 20s as we move into Friday and with temperatures reaching in the upper 20s. Saturday, we're going to see some snow on the ground with some light flurries and temperatures reaching low 30s. And guys, that's your weather for the week. Stay safe and warm out there. Becca Bo, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Joe. Local art enthusiasts came together to support a beloved gallery space over the weekend. A futuristic art show lit up the public space. Public Space One and DITV reporter Kaylin Cluck was there to see how it came together. Colorful, strange, and endlessly creative, these words can sum up the gallery of Public Space One. The Iowa City Art Venue held its annual fundraiser last week, with beautiful pieces from local artists up for auction. The gallery features work from 65 different artists, and they're linked by one theme, the future. The exhibition was called Dear Future, a partial reference to Public Space One's future plans to improve their gallery space with new walls and flooring. The pieces were made by University of Iowa students, alumni, faculty, and community artists. Just really grateful for all the artists supporting us and, and everyone who's coming and bidding on art and, and sustaining us. It really uh, makes us function all year long. It keeps us here and keeps, uh, keeps us keeping Iowa City slightly weirder than it would be otherwise. The exhibition closed Saturday night as the pieces were auctioned off to benefit Public Space One. Art lovers sported some futuristic style costumes, and the event also featured a music and breakdance performance. Public Space One board member Sayuri Human contributed a piece of her own art, saying the venue is an important place for creative minds to express themselves freely. I feel like this organization means a lot more than just shows, but it brings so much it's like a community. Reporting from Public Space One, this is Kaylin Cluck, DITV News. It has been confirmed that former University of Iowa basketball standout Bill Logan passed away on Thursday at the age of 83. A two-time All-Big Ten honoree, Logan is a member of the Hawkeyes 1,000-point club with 1,118 points. Additionally, he was a member of Iowa's legendary Fabulous Five team in 1956 that ultimately finished as NCAA runners-up. That season, Iowa won 17 straight games, the second longest streak in school history. After graduation, Logan was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1956 and played for one season in the National Industrial Basketball League. As it stands, no funeral arrangements have been made. I think the current Hawkeyes could take a page out of Bill Logan's book or two. Um, the struggle continues. Another loss this weekend to Nebraska. I don't know. Yeah, gonna have absolutely, to do. Bill. I feel like I've been saying it every week, but I'm hoping at some point maybe they're going to pull it together. Let's find out. Let's toss it over to Justin and Taylor in the sports studio to find out more. The men's basketball team was hot off their second conference win of the year against Wisconsin, and they are hoping to keep the momentum going as um, this Saturday on a road game at Nebraska. Hot start with this pass to Bear that goes back to Mohanan as he drains the three. The Husker, Huskers would respond with a three of their own from Palmer. Bohannon hits Cook with the pass down low that he brings in for the post-rising dunk. Watson Jr. gets the steal off Bohannon and hits Palmer down low for the layup over Jack Nungy. Bohannon hits Isaiah Moss here for the three. Cook gets the rebound and gets the dunk. Cook finished with 24 points on the night, but that wasn't enough as Iowa fell 98-84. We shot. We shoot 50% from the field, 43 from three. You know, we had 20 assists on nine turnovers against a team that was up in us. You're on the road, you know, you come back. So there's a lot of good. You know, we, we score 84 points. You're on the road, score 84 points. That, that should keep you in the game. We gave up 98. That's not good math. Iowa will be back in action tomorrow night at home against Minnesota. The Iowa wrestling team hosted the Michigan Wolverines on Saturday night where the Hawkeyes dropped their second straight dual meet. 
Spencer Lee got the Hawks off to a hot start at 125. Lee scored 14 points in the first period with his takedown, followed by four three, with three four-point kills. He went on to beat his opponent by tech ball. Vince Turk at 141, barely escaping this one with a takedown in overtime to secure the victory. Senior Brandon Sorensen picked up some bonus points for the Hawks with this second period pin. After intermission, Iowa's only win came from Alex Marinelli at the 165 pound weight class. In the end, the duel came down to the heavyweight bout between Iowa's number three ranked Sam Stoll and Michigan's number two ranked Adam Kuhn. But it wasn't meant to be for the Hawks. Stoll gave up his gave up this first period takedown that ended up being the deciding factor in the match and the duel. Hawks lost 1917. Um, that was a winnable duel even without Kemmer. We had some bonus points. We needed bonus points. Sorensen and um, Spencer Lee showed up for bonus points, uh, but we got to get guys more competitive in all positions. Iowa will look to bounce back this Friday night when they face Minnesota in Carver. The Hawks hosted their last home meet of the indoor track season at the Black and Gold premiere. Chris Douglas and Antonio Woodard put on incredible performances at the meet. Woodard became second in the Big Ten in the 200 meter dash. Douglas on the 60 meter hurdles set his very own personal best time, edging out former Hawkeye teammate Aaron Mallett. You can start. Uh, of course, I'm going for that number one spot. I'm trying to win a big title, but obviously you got to start from somewhere. So 21-2, I'm dropping some time off, shaving some time off from last week. So I'm in a pretty good place. I've been focusing a little bit more on speed this year. Uh, last year I did some endurance too, because I'm also a 400 hurdler. So my coach would always have me running you know, longer stuff in practice on our harder days and occasionally four by four at the meets, but he's been keeping me more speed oriented this year. And I think that's been a huge part of my success in the off season. The Hawks do not host the meet until April's outdoor Musco Twilight. The women's basketball team was coming off a great win over the 12th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes last Thursday, but fell just short, or just fell short to Nebraska for the second time this season. Kathleen Doyle dribbles down the court to hit Mackenzie Meyer with a path with a pass she takes in for the layup. Junior Megan Gustafson led the team with 26 points, 10 rebounds, including this layup here. Mackenzie Meyer breaks through the Nebraska defenders and finished with nine points on the night. Kathleen Doyle also added about 16 points, including this shot down low that just was not enough for the Hawkeyes as they fell 92-74. Obviously, you know, struggled on both ends of the court, offensively, defensively, where it just felt like everything was going Nebraska's way. Every call was going to Nebraska. It was just one of those games. It was like a bad dream, and you just can't get out of it. And, you know, I think we came out and played a lot better in the second half. And, you know, we didn't stop fighting. And that's what I would expect out of my players, and that's what you want out of your players, but that's what we got. They did not stop fighting. I think we just got to come out with that defensive intensity and that intensity overall throughout the whole time, you know, first, second, third, fourth quarter. Um, I don't think we brought the intensity that we had at Ohio State and carrying it over, um, but we need to do that. Next up for the Hawkeyes is a road trip to East Lansing, where Iowa will take on Michigan State this weekend. That's it from us in the sports studio. Tune in tomorrow where we'll take a closer look at Iowa's wrestling loss against Michigan this past weekend. And for more on women's basketball's game against Nebraska. Well, that's a wrap on this Monday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to head to dailyiowa.com for all your latest news. If that isn't enough of the Daily Iron for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV, I'm Becca Scadden. And I'm Bo Bowman. Thanks for watching.